question. Where where are you now, and how is it there? I'm in Western Ukraine. Uh, I mean, it's quiet here, more or less, but everybody is engaged in either helping refugees or in territorial defense or volunteers to do other things uh, like uh, fortifications around the villages and block posts. Yes. <clears throat> we also just saw the uh, news today, uh, which just happened half an hour ago, I think, that uh, a television station was yeah. almost bombed, unfortunately. They, they, there are five people killed and many wounded. Uh, I, I, I think uh, Putin is taking revenge on civilians and on city infrastructure because he didn't manage with his army to occupy Ukraine in one or two days. So now we'll have a lot of civilian casualties. We have already a lot. And I hope the whole world understands now what is Russia today. Uh, the other horrible news is that I just got a letter uh, uh, published in Literaturna Gazeta in Russia, letter of Russian poets and writers who support Putin's aggression. And people who signed this letter are also from Russian Pan Center, including board members. So I think Russian pen should be expelled from uh, international pen and shouldn't exist anymore. I can imagine why you why you, why you say that. When you talk with 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 other people, but maybe also a question to your, your yourself: Is this invasion that just happened? Is this something that you saw coming? I, uh, well, I, I thought there was a danger, but I was thinking that uh, Russia and Russian politicians are still civilized and not uh, really, uh, not would behave like Hitler in 1939. But uh, I mean, I was mistaken. Uh, I was not alone. I mean, 60% of Ukrainians didn't believe that uh, there can be aggression against Ukraine. And now I think uh, uh, the relationship with Russia and with Russians is severed for half a century at least. I am myself ethnic Russian and I, I mean, I, I feel very bitter. I mean, we have a barbar barbarism in the middle of Europe, somebody who is thinking uh, like uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, barbers from 12th or 13th century. I mean, they are, I mean, they are doing inquisition in, in Ukrainian villages. Their houses burned, uh, the people are killed if they don't give telephones to Russian soldiers so that they could call for free their parents. And I mean, uh, I have never imagined it is possible in, in Europe in the uh, 21st century. It's horrible. Um, in 2013, uh, 14, you were here with us at the Bali yeah. and you gave the Freedom Lecture um, on your book, Ukraine Diaries, uh, about Ukrainian identity. Since then, is there something new you've learned about Ukrainian identity? Well, I mean, it's it's been fortified. I, I mean, there was always a question, what is national idea of Ukraine? In fact, national idea of Ukraine to keep together and uh, uh, to care about the independence and freedom, because if there is no Ukraine, there will be no free Ukrainians. And for Ukraine and Ukrainians, freedom is more uh, important than stability. Ukrainians never lived in a stable situation, but they were always free. Russians prefer stability to freedom. So, I mean, they don't need uh, freedom at all. They, ha they have freedom to be silent. Uh, but, I mean, Ukrainians, Ukrainians are very different. They are individualistic. They want to have voice. They have want to have right. They have chosen already six presidents and threw one of them away to Moscow. So in your new book, Grey Bees, you write, you, have, you write about two men who live, uh, who live in the east of Ukraine, which, is, yeah. which has been a war zone for uh, eight years. What did eight years of war do to people in the east of Ukraine? How, well, how did it impact their lives? I mean, people are very adaptable, especially people who don't want to move. And uh, I went three times to the war zone in the last years. And I noticed that actually people are quietly listening to the explosions seven or five kilometers away and talk about something else and even can mention what kind of uh, missile or mine was it because i mean they can by sound they can differentiate so i mean if people are afraid of war they escape if people just become fatalist 
and uh, somehow they believe that uh, this war will not destroy their house or themselves, they remain. Very often people actually who escaped from the war zone, they had to come back to their houses because they couldn't find job, they couldn't find cheap flat to rent, and so the state was not helping enough. But uh, uh, it became a normality. I mean, uh, you know that uh, I think for many Northern Koreans, their life is normality because they, they don't see the escape, they, they don't see exit from this situation. Mm -hmm. So Putin has been saying that um, Ukraine and, and, and Russia are like brothers uh, and they have to live together, uh, which is something that we also hear quite often here in the Dutch media. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Well, if you can c compare them uh, with brothers, it will be Cain and Abel. Yes. But, but uh, otherwise, I mean, uh, they were living together for centuries. They were living also for centuries separately when Ukrainian was free territory uh, ruled by Getmans who were elected by Cossacks and Russia was always a monarchy. So, I mean, Russians are monarchies, they cannot live without Tsar. And when they have the Tsar, they keep the Tsar until he is dead or until they kill him and love the next one. Ukrainians never had respect for any power, for any leader, for any government. So, so I mean, they, they will remain like this. This is the main difference. So they can look similar, but they speak differently because Ukrainians speak freely and don't care about criticism. And they eat very differently because Ukrainians love tasty food more than Russians. <laughs> but now the Ukrainians have rallied around the president, right? Yeah, yeah, because I mean, he showed courage. He showed courage that he didn't escape, is not hiding, he is working. So I think Ukrainians are ready to forgive his other things which they didn't like. I mean, like putting uh, unexperienced friends into state positions and other uh, promises that he didn't fulfill. But I mean, now he is behaving like a real statesman. I hope he is not playing a role. He is authentic now. Yes. So we have a last question, Mr. Kurov. Uh, we are fully booked tonight here in Amsterdam. What would you like to add to this story or what would you like to share with our audience? Well, I wanted to ask everybody to take more interest in Ukrainian history to understand the difference between Russian history and Ukrainian history, to understand Ukrainians more, so that not to fall victims of Russian propaganda, information war and fake news. Ukrainians are not anti-Semitic. They, they voted 73% of voters for a Jewish comedian who became Ukrainian president. So, I mean, Ukrainians are not Nazis and extreme nationalists. We don't have a single nationalistic party in the parliament. People didn't vote for them. So all these lies spread by Russia and by the propagandists, I mean, they will affect uh, Dutch people, anybody who doesn't know real situation and real history of Ukraine. So please look for books. There are many books in English and some books in Dutch. and. Uh, just uh, become aware, learn geopolitics, learn history of Europe and learn history of Ukraine. Thank you very much, Mr. Putin. You are very welcome. Thank you.